Hello friends, welcome to our tutorial learning fast API for beginners. This is the ninth video in the series and in this video I am going to cover passing multiple parameters. The last two videos I have covered uh, the string and num numeric validations. We have also seen how to use path and query parameters and also passing request body uh, as parameters. Now let's see some more advanced uses of the request body declarations. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below and also don't forget to click on the bell icon next to it. I'm going to start with a simple class item which we had in the previous model. I'm going to just con use the same thing. So we have a, I've created an item class which in it's the base model. It has name, description, price and uh, tax. In this code, if you see, we have three parameters that this function accepts. The first one is item ID, which is a path parameter. It has been defined in the path as well as over here. And then I'm giving some validations for this. I'm saying that it should be mandatory. This is the title that's been, that will be shown. And then it should, the value should be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to thousand. And the second one, since it's not been defined here, Q, it's going to be a type string. And I've mentioned it as none that means it is optional and then comes the final one which is of type item and then it's again none that means it's again an optional parameter the function parameters here have passed three different parameters but fast api knows how to handle it and it will recognize it based on these conditions which i have already told you if the parameter is also declared in the path that is like I have a parameter for this function and it's also declared in the path, then it'll be used as a path parameter. If the parameter is of a singular type, that is a string, int, float, bool or something similar to that, and it's not defined over here, then it will consider that as a query string parameter. And finally, if a parameter is declared and it's of a pydantic model type, something like this, then it will be interpreted as a request body. A path parameter is always required, but other two have made them as optional parameters. If I open the docs, you can see we have one method that's been exposed, that which is called update item. We are using a put HTTP method. And in if you see, it accepts three parameters. One is the item ID. It's a required parameter. It's of type integer path parameter and then the second one is q which is of type string and it is an optional parameter and it's a query parameter and finally we also have a request body and its schema has been defined over here it accepts a name of type string price is zero we can pass all this now if i try it out if i try to execute you can see that it says item id is required so I pass some values over here. Let me execute this. Now you can see I get a response body. It has accepted item ID, which was a path parameter. Q I have not passed anything. And then even the item, it has gone ahead and successfully returned. So this is how we can actually go ahead and pass, mix the three different types of parameters path query as well as the request body and then also make some of them as optional in the previous example the path operation would expect a json body with the attributes of an item right that was something similar to this what we have passed over here this is how it was expecting what if there is there are multiple request body parameters so let me show you how to pass them I'll go ahead and create another body parameter. Let me copy another model over here. This class is called as user. It's again from the base model. It has two attributes, username and full name. Both are of type string. Now I'm going to update this code. I've removed the query parameter over here. So I'm just using one path parameter, which is item ID of type int. I've not, I've removed all the validations to make, keep it simple. And then the other two are of type item and user they both are request body parameters this is how we can pass any number of parameters that we require 
as you know fast api will recognize based on the type and then whether it is a query or a request body these two because they are of type identic it will automatically consider them as a request body i'll call this as items i'll modify this code i'll make it as items underscore new and then i'll execute this so you can see it now when i run this i have two functions the first one this is how we were passing it just contains the attribute within the square flower, uh, within the curly braces but in case of in case when we have multiple request body items automatically the fast api recognizes that these two are of type request body parameters so it will then use the parameter names as the key fields in the body and expect a body something similar to this so here you can see that within the curly braces there is a key the key is the first one is of type item the second key is of type user and then we have the value for this key which is again a json which contains all the attributes as defined in the item and again for the user now let me go ahead and try this out so i'm going to say then description the price is 1 and tax is 1 me execute this it executed it was the thing was successful and then i got back the response whatever i entered you can see this is how i get a response back fast api knows how to handle them so we can pass any number of arguments of type request body and fast api knows to handle them not just this fast api knows how to also do the basic validation in case of this these types of compound data types till now we have been defining the class and then we were using them as uh, the request body parameters what if you would want to use a string or an integer that is a singular value as a request body parameter so if i go ahead and define something over here as uh, parameter q okay and then if i say that it should be of a particular type int this parameter q will be considered as a query string parameter instead of a request body parameter which we would want it to be now let me run this and show you now if you see the documentation over here for this q is taken as a integer but what if i want this q to be request body itself i don't want it to be a query string parameter i want this to also be included in the request body in that scenario all that i need to do is fast api the way it provides query and path objects to validate and define the query and path parameters fast api also provides an equivalent to the request body which is called as body so all i need to do in this case is i can go ahead and after int i can say equal to and then it has to be included over here once i import this i can add the body over here and then just open and close if i pass the ellipses it makes it mandatory just like we do with path or query parameter now if i run this notice that q has been moved to the request body instead of a query parameter now q though it is a singular value of type integer but still it becomes a part of request body now all that i need is instead of entering it as a query string parameter i am going to pass it as part of a request body now if i execute that you can see only the one which i have passed as a path parameter is available the request doesn't contain anything in the query string and all the parameter that i have passed here have been sent as a request body parameter so this is what it is this is how the request url it doesn't contain anything and then response i get back everything just that i have not included in the code i can go ahead and add it over here you can see i'll try this out i'll pass the value as 1 then for this 12 and then i'll execute that 
you can see 12 is the path parameter which it takes the rest has gone as a request body and then I get back the same so this is how we can even pass a singular values as request body let me extend this example a little bit I'm going to add one more parameter over here in this I'm going to call it X and I'm going to say string string is a required parameter now we have X of type string it's a query parameter we have a path parameter and then again the same request body the way we had different kinds of validations for uh, path and query we can also do the same kind of validation in case of body as well and uh, we'll explore this in the coming videos now in this video the last thing that I'm going to cover is embedding a single body parameter let's say you only have a single item body parameter from the pydantic model item code let me go ahead and remove all this now by default in this case fast api will expect its body directly but what if you want to expect it as a json with the key item instead of directly just a json value let me demonstrate this so that uh, it will be easy for you to understand so when i run this the way fast api expects the request body is in this fashion but all are in json format each attribute is a key and as a value but what if you want it to expect a json with a key item so let me go ahead and add modify the code here i'm going to add the validation make it mandatory and then i'm going to say embed is equal to true now you can notice the difference earlier the way it was accepting the request is something similar to this where there was no key it was directly accepting the value in json format now when i refresh this you can see that instead of earlier this is how it used to accept but now because i have added the embedded key made it as true now the body will be accepted in the format of key value pairs now this is the key and this is the value in json format so that's it about passing multiple parameters in fast api so i've in this video i've shown you how to add multiple body parameters to your path operation function even though a request can have only single body item and then i've shown you how fast api handles everything and finally we also saw how to pass singular values to be received as part of a body request body and also i have shown you if even if there is a single request body item okay how to convert that and accept it as a key value pair in the next video i am going to cover the fields object the fields object is used to declare validation and metadata inside identic models it will help us to declare additional validation the same way we did with query and uh, path parameters earlier if you have not already subscribed to our channel please do subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below and also don't forget to click on the bell icon next to it and do like this video thank you